This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnston. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 151, baby. Oh yeah. In today's episode, I speak to Clarification Charlie. That's right, she is back representing the women and doing all of that kind of women's stuff. And we speak about appreciating teachers because it was Teacher Appreciation Week a couple of weeks ago. We are a bit late to the party, but we're here and that's the important thing. Um, remember, all of the rock and roll vocabulary from today's episode is on the website and there is a lot of it. Um, so go to rockandrollenglish.com episode number 150 and remember if you want a podcast every day with a transcript, with flashcards, with quizzes and lots of other just wonderful, wonderful stuff then go to rockandrollenglish.com slash family. I will speak to you all again at the end people. Happy listening. <laughs> Clarification Charlie, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you, Martin. How are you? I was going to say always fantastic, <laughs> but just from the stress that you have just put me through. So you put someone through a difficult time. We had a very difficult time just now, didn't we? We did. I'm yeah. really sorry. I'm still actually really hot because of it. I'm really stressed yeah. still myself. The listeners are asking themselves, what? What happened? Well, let me tell you, um, we <laughs> logged on. Clarification Charlie's telling me I can't hear you what's going on I'm sending her messages like check your audio settings I'm checking my microphone there's complete panic and the problem was that she hadn't switched on the volume on her computer <laughs> so 15 I'm minutes so of my life wasted <laughs> looking at you I could hear you but you so could not sorry. hear me. That volume is difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. It is difficult. It the, was a difficult button to find. Diff yeah, these computers are so difficult these days, aren't they? With their volume switching that on. <sighs> Jesus Christ. I know. I am sorry. I was, do you know what? I was so proud of myself as well because for the first time ever I had all our different programs open, ready to record, mm. which never happens anyway. I'd even switched my mic to the right settings. Oh, wow. so I was like really proud. Wow. And then I just fucked it at the end there, didn't Just I? with that volume. It's just that volume. Never mind. Never <laughs> mind. As I said, I'm sure I can find it within me to forgive you. Thank um, you. Anyway, clarification, Charlie, how do we usually start the show? With a review. Do you think we have a review? Um, I'm going to say yes. I can see your excited face. I'm sorry to say that uh. you probably won't be excited for much longer because the answer to that question <laughs> is no. Here we are. Here's uh. the sad face. The listeners can't see it, but there's a sad face there. That is um, a sad face. So to make clarification, Charlie, happy, please leave a review. Any <laughs> iTunes, Facebook, whatever you want. Um, anyway, so do you know what we're talking about? I don't. And as I've said before, it always makes me nervous. Well, you should feel quite comfortable about this one because we're talking about teachers. Because last week, I think, two weeks ago, I'm getting a bit confused, was Teacher Appreciation Week. Oh, wow. So, you know, you're a real teacher. I'm a yeah. semi-teacher. Um, yeah. So I thought we could just talk about teaching see if we're appreciated, what kind of teachers we are. Yeah, Just nice. have a, a bit of a teaching chat, really. Hey. Um, so the first question I've got here is, um, how do you respond when a student asks you a question to which you don't know the answer? What is your <laughs> what is your go-to response? So go-to, the one that you always do. Because you're a history teacher, aren't you? Uh, yeah. I so, get I mean, it's pretty difficult stuff. for you to know all of the history of like forever yeah i know right it's a lot of history yeah, there's a lot of that isn't there there's yeah. one thing there's a lot of in the world it's history <laughs> um yeah my kind of standard response is often um oh yeah it's a really interesting question um <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm not too sure on that one. Maybe you can research that one and tell me next time. Yeah, that's the one I go to. I do your tactic as well of trying to buy some time. So there's a nice expression to buy some time, yeah. to create time by just giving it like a, 
Yeah, that is a good question. And in this sort of moment, I'm going in my head, oh, fuck, what is the answer to that question? And then um, I will often just say, that's your homework to tell me the answer to that question. I I sometimes as well ask like, oh, does anyone else know the answer to this one? (laughs) I'm like, does anyone else like to have a go? What do you think? Yeah, that's a good one as well, actually. Um, And then whatever someone else says, even if I don't know it's right, I'll just say, yep, that one, that one. What he said, (laughs) what he said. (laughs) Um, So the next question is, what student activity bugs you the most? So the word bugs here is a nice piece of rock and roll vocabulary. It means what annoys you the most, what students do? Bottle flipping and dropping empty bottles on the floor. (laughs) Bottle flipping? Why? I, that's not really a thing over oh, it's here a in thing. Italy. It's a it thing. It is a thing. So there's some nice vocabulary. It's a thing. Like it's a thing. People actually do this. Mm-hmm. They flip. So they like to. They flip the bottle, and they have to. Fl- bottle has to flip and land like upright. Ah. Oh, okay. That that's a good game, though. That oh, is it's a good game. A fucking annoying game is what it is. Can um, be annoying, I imagine. My, other like pet hate is when they've got an empty bottle and they just like mess about with it on the table or, or knock it on the floor and it's that like empty bottle hitting the floor it sound is. that happens a lot in the afternoon when you're already tired a little bit grouchy oh, and then they yeah. just start like pissing about with their bottles <laughs> um so some nice rock and roll vocabulary there when you, you said uh, you're a little bit grouchy so you're already in a bad oh, mood anything yeah. can annoy you and they start pissing about they start messing about and yeah. um, the only sort of knowledge i had of bottles from my day in school was spin the bottle um <laughs> i don't know if that's a thing in um other countries uh, where you would sit in a circle uh, with a few boys few girls spin the bottle And wherever the bottle stops, those people need to kiss. And wow, what a game that is. When I was in year when I was in year four, this is a true story. So I was like nine. I got asked to play with the year sixes who were (gasps) eleven. And so there was just me just with the year sixes playing spin the bottle. Although I wasn't allowed to kiss because I was too young, so I just had to hug. But still, that was the the best (laughs) hugging. I had ever done. I'm pretty sure maybe what a loser. I invited to the party. Can't see it through. It was it was some good <laughs> hugging. Believe me, it was. I, I thought it was actually sex at the time. I was like, <laughs> yeah, sure. I've had sex. Just hugged a girl <laughs> for five seconds. So who's the big man now? Hey, who's the big man now? Oh, proudest moment of my life. Oh, well um, done. I forgot to mention you actually use some other rock and roll vocabulary when you said a pet hate and so it's something that you hate um and one of my pet hates is with the teenagers especially and you say where's your homework and they say i've forgotten my book and i think look i know you haven't forgotten your book you're just saying that i want to go through their bag look for the book but all of these privacy laws these days a load of rubbish you can't can you yeah, I know, exactly. We you know. have it, we've got it at our school, we have uniform and our uniform's quite bad and kids try to rebel, like try mm. to sort of act out and like today, a kid didn't have his tie on and I was like, oh, no why, tie, why, why, where's your tie? Why aren't you wearing your tie? And um, and he's like, oh, I just left it at home. I was like, fine, detention. Oh, suddenly the tie's magically found in his bag. Oh. <laughs> Um, I don't know if people are familiar with detention. That's when you have to just, like stay during lunchtime or maybe even after school and yeah. just do boring stuff, basically. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, I just want to go through their bags every now and again. Yeah. What's the problem? Have a look through their bag. Is that a problem? No. If I want to touch them in a private place, come That's on, go problem. free. <laughs> <laughs> We're all human. Let's just touch each other and go free, okay? <laughs> but some people say you're not allowed to do that, which... Which is a bit annoying, which is a bit annoying. Um, what about admin? Do you have a lot of that? Like administ- is it I'm, Admin's short, isn't it, for administration. There we go, administration yes. tasks. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, a manager, so I have quite a oh, bit of Of course admin you are, of course you are, clarification, Charlie. <laughs> Just slipped that one in nicely there, didn't we? Well, I'm a manager, so I have people doing my administration no, for me. No, I don't. I have to do a lot of administration. That oh. is my problem. 
yeah, how can you be asked as a manager to do some administration work? That I is know. just not on, not acceptable. I think the idea is obviously the higher up you go, ironically, the less teaching you do. And the so more admin. it gets like that. And so now I have a lot of admin stuff to do. That is actually one of the reasons I don't actually want to become a manager because mm. my admin skills are just even the registers are pretty pretty tricky for me so if something is tricky it's difficult yeah. i can't really get my head around them so that means i can't understand them um as well we had like the just a paper register that was already difficult enough yeah. but then now when they introduced the electronic ones Oof. i was like look i can't even do this paper one and now you're giving me an electronic <laughs> one this is just not going to happen. And we have to do both as well because the paper yeah. one, they say for the fire alarm or something like that, if there's a fire, they need to know who's in the school. Yeah. I say, look, I've got a pretty good memory. If there's a fire, <laughs> I'll say, well, I think there was Antonio, he was here, Luca, you know, there was Around a few other five, bit. Roughly. Yeah, there's about five or six of them. So let's just... Let's just go free with that one, shall we? Let's use that. <laughs> reports as well, writing reports. Oh, oh. Yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. Some of the shit I write in reports, I tell you. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? I just sort of think of like things that teachers used to say to me and I think that sounds that sounds good. I don't really understand what it means, but it sounds good. Ah, popular with his peers, you know. Yeah, oh, that's All a good the one. All classics. Yeah. That's a really nice one. Popular with his peers. So peers is another word for friends. And the ones that are a bit naughty, so the ones that don't behave so well, um, I normally go for the line, he needs to channel his energy yes. into his studies when really I want to say he's an annoying little bastard yes. is what I want to say. Absolutely. That is such a classic line. Such yeah, a classic. Unfortunately, again, you're not really allowed to do that. Um, but yeah, all of these things, I'm just saying we need to be appreciated for these things. All the admin we do. You know, Clarification Charlie's a manager and she has to do admin. Show her some appreciation. Yeah. Show her some appreciation. Exactly. Um, what about your attitude to discipline? How do you discipline people? Oh, Or I... students? <laughs> I, I... It's nothing sexual, by the way. You know, I could see your, the look on your face. It's nothing sexual. No. <laughs> I no, I can be quite mean. Basically, Ooh. I'm not. I I'm quite um, strong when I want to be. I would not want to get on the wrong side of you. So when you get on the no. wrong side of someone, it's when you basically see their angry side. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm not very good at the discipline thing. Um, I just yeah, it's not really my thing. Um, one of the teachers at work, she was trying to show me the technique of the death stare. When you just look at someone like you're going yeah. to kill them, but my death stare is yeah. really not very good. It needs it needs a lot of work. Oh, I'm pretty good at that. I've nailed that. I think <laughs> to be honest. So when you've nailed it, you've got it really. You do it really well. Yeah. Um, although I must admit, I do enjoy it when some kids are maybe running through the school, uh, maybe not my students, and I have to tell them to stop. That's when I show my authority, and I do think, oh, that felt good. Yeah, I showed them stop. who was bossing. Yeah, stop. No. <laughs> no. Stop that. Do you say yeah. it in Italian or do you say it in English? No, no, I say it in English. It's always got to be in English, hasn't it? <laughs> Just, and I mean, stop is a pretty easy word to understand as well. I, I think that might even be international. Again, um, they use that in Italian. So right. in my opinion, or in my head, that means they use that everywhere in the world. Yes. But um, I'm not 100% sure. So here's an interesting question, um, talking about students showing your appreciation after you have them maybe in a class and then you're, they're not your actual students anymore. What kind of love are they giving you later? Do they talk to you? Do they ignore you? Yeah, I've been really lucky, actually. Um, so I obviously have, I teach them right up to 18 mm. and then they go off and I've had some of them, like, they get me nice presents, which is quite nice. What's the best present you've ever got? Um, <laughs> one of the best presents I've got. Um, I, I got me this one. I used to always make a, it was like a running joke in my, in my class because. Mm, so there's some nice vocabulary, a running joke, a constant joke. Yeah. So I would say something, I don't know, try and sort of, uh, something modern day. 
and I'd be like, it's because I'm down with the kids. Sure, and, down with um, the kids, yeah. So I'm, with I'm with them, I understand them, them sure. Yeah, I'm basically one of them. And yeah, so sure. they used to find this hilarious and they bought me a book which said how to be a hipster. Um, and it was like, because you're so down with the kids, uh, which was just a really nice and thoughtful Thoughtful, present. yeah, they're, they're always the ones, aren't they? Um, yeah. I generally notice that I don't really get many presents from students. We've noticed that it's generally the girls yeah, that get them. Always. And us boys, at like Useless. the end of the course, all the girls come in the staff room. Oh, look, they got me this candle. They got me yeah. this necklace. And us boys are just sitting there like, yeah, well... <laughs> Someone shook my hand, so yeah. that was good. That was a good, it was a good handshake. It was a good handshake. I've had because I obviously live in the town that I teach, and I go out, uh, or used, to, or I used to go out quite a lot. I don't anymore, but I used to. They used to always buy me drinks as well, which is quite nice. So there might be a kid who was like a little shit for like five years, and they'd be like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, Miss. Have a drink." And then you were going out drinking with your students. Well, I'd I... go out to the bar, and sure. they would be there. Sure, this sounds dodgy. This remember dodgy doesn't sound right. It sounds a bit disturbing. Yeah. Clarification, just... Charlie, going out, taking advantage of young boys <laughs> no. that are drunk. Oh my Un- god. <laughs> Unbelievable. Here we go. Yeah. Um. So some other ways to um, show your appreciation are obviously to get a present, and one of them is to make them a photo. Has anyone ever sort of made you a photo of like you with the class or anything like that? I've got photos, yeah, of me with some classes that mm. I've had because I used to have like a, a tutor group. So I used to be the person they come to to register with every day and I was with them for five years. So Ooh, you get wow. to know them quite well. You have them for half an hour every morning for five years. Um, and so I had like some nice, like we got photos like as a group and that sort of stuff. So that's really nice. Mm. I had one student who actually drew a portrait of me as well. Was it was it a, was it a complimenting picture, or not very? No, it was it was nice actually. It was really lovely. But she only did it in like fifteen minutes. She literally stood there, got a pencil, and it's so good. I I would want someone to draw for longer. I would say, look, that only took you fifteen minutes. Like, yeah. go home and do a better one. Like, maybe spend like a day on it and then give it to me. Okay, I... then, then we can talk. I will find it. I think I've got it pinned on my board. I will take a picture and I will send it to you. Sounds great. Um, Photos, though, as presents are a great present, I think, because Mm. they cost almost no money. And because it's so thoughtful that it's always a good present. So you can just buy some. You can spend like five pounds, get a little frame picture in there. Boom, shaka, laka. You have got a fantastic present so pretty good you can't give me any grief for it so give me any grief you can't criticize me basically um another one another way probably the best way actually is to tell your teacher that they have made a positive impact um, on your life has that ever happened to you yeah well yes but via sort of means and a card so some people have written some girls basically sure have written some very like lovely letters um i had one girl who was saying something about like being an inspiration like, you as, as a woman you, I you know, are right? an inspiration I know, jesus I know. Christ. and then and then she got me a book as well which was about other inspirational women and um it's actually a really interesting read you really are like some kind of feminist aren't you like fighting I... for the women's rights and all of this rubbish um but yeah i noticed that you said it was the girls you can't be doing yeah. that if you're a boy you can't okay. be send. You just can't. Yeah. You'd have to basically change into a woman if I've you had, do that. I've had a couple of cards from boys, but it's normally just like thanks, cheers, <laughs> thanks, thanks for being, thanks for yeah. being a good teacher, cheers. Um, I noticed though with the younger kids, um, for example, some kids I had last year. We had a really good relationship, had them all year. At the end of the course, you know, it was an emotional goodbye. This year, I see them in the corridor. I say hello. They don't even look at me. The I bastards. I know. I'm like, look, come on. We're like we're like BFFs, best friends forever. Well we I were was... last year. Now you're not even you're not even looking at me. I had a group like my we've obviously exam time at the moment. So I had my last lesson with one of my groups. And some of them I've taught for five years. Some of them I've taught them for this course for the last two years. And I was like, Oh, so this is our last lesson And they were like, All right, bye. <laughs> just walked out. I was like, 
Fuck See you up. later. <laughs> I've like worked so hard for you for two years, and that's all you got. You just walk. Can we go? It's lunch. <laughs> okay. Thank. Thanks very much. Yeah, I, I'm really emotional too. Um, speaking about that though, just telling a the teacher they had a positive impact on your life. I kind of did this with my teacher when I got my A level results. Uh, well, I didn't. I didn't go that far. I just sort of said thanks, like. You were a great teacher. You really helped me. And the night before, I hadn't gone to bed. And I had stayed up all night with corporal coma, actually, drinking. Oh. And I remember I finished that sentence and he said to me, you really smell of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of thought, this moment isn't how I I had imagined it. <laughs> But hopefully I left an impact on him as well. And hopefully he still thinks about that moment. Always. So, Always. Mr. Farrell, if you're listening, OK, I love you too. I love you too. <laughs> um, anyway, I think we can safely say that, well, certainly you are appreciated. Clarification, Charlie. Uh, still not so sure how much I am. But never mind. You know, I don't need any <laughs> letters from people. Sure. I don't want one. Never <laughs> wanted one. Did not want it. Um, anyway, thanks a lot for your time, Clarification Charlie. I'm sure we will see you again soon. I look forward to it. See you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so that was me speaking to Clarification Charlie about teacher appreciation and all that rubbish. So let's have a look at some of that rock and roll vocabulary. Um, so at the beginning, um, I said that clarification charlie had put me through 15 minutes of stress so when you put someone through something it's when you make them experience a kind of not so great thing for example in this situation i had to basically watch her for 15 minutes messing around with her computer trying to find out the problem so she put me through that terrible time but i'm alive and that's the important thing I then asked her what is her go-to response when students ask her a question that she doesn't know the answer to. So go-to response, go-to something. It's what we immediately go to in a particular situation. So in this situation, it was when the students ask her a question. What's your go-to response? What do you automatically think of? What do you automatically do? Um, speaking of that, I said that um, I often try to buy some time. That's obviously a um, metaphor. Um, I don't actually pay someone for time, but I just buy some time by making noises like, mm, yeah, hmm, good question. Um, and then I asked her what student activity bugs her the most. So if something bugs you, it annoys you. And speaking of that, she said a pet hate of mine is. So a pet hate is just something you hate. I don't know why we talk about pets here. There are no pets involved, um, but that's what we say, a pet hate. And she said it was when the bottles flip and stuff like this and said, yeah, in the afternoon when you're a bit grouchy. So when you're a bit grouchy, it's when you get irritated very easily. Maybe when you're hungry, you're a bit grouchy. You get angry when probably you normally wouldn't get angry. And she said that the students are pissing about with their bottles. So when you piss about with a bottle or piss about with anything, you mess around with it. Then we had the word detention. I don't know if that's an internationally known word. That's when you have to stay extra time at school for doing something wrong. Um, then I mentioned the registers at my school are a bit tricky for me. So if something is tricky, it's difficult. It's the same. And I said, I can't get my head round them. So I can't understand those registers. They're just so difficult. You have the person's name and then you have to like tick the name. It's just, it's really complicated. Um, and speaking of reports, clarification, Charlie said she sometimes writes popular with his peers. So peers is kind of a formal way to say friends. Then I said that I wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of clarification, Charlie. So when you get on the wrong side of someone, that's when you make them angry. We, we generally use it in this exact example, actually. I wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of him or her or whatever. Um, and then clarification, Charlie was telling us about a running joke in her class. A running joke is a joke which 
carries on, which continues. And she said that she is down with the kids. If you're down with people, then you're one of them, let's say. You understand them. We had the word dodgy again. We had that last week, didn't we? When something's a bit disturbing, not quite right. Then I used the term, you can't give me any grief. So if you use that and you say you can't give me any grief, it means you can't criticise me, let's say. Um, anyway, remember, all of the rock and roll vocabulary is on the website, rockandrollenglish.com, episode number 151, baby. I'm thinking about mentioning something about the family, but I think you already know. But I think I also need to mention it is the best family in the world. Um, anyway, I will see you all again next week, people. But in the meantime, just keep on rocking, baby. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.